All right, it's Chainsaw here. We are back with another episode of Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Uh, last left off, I was going. Uh, there's a wine cellar behind me and a laboratory in front of me, and we are gonna go into the laboratory and uh, see what we can find. All right, let's get it done. fell into the kitchen floor, tears were beginning to well in his eyes as he received the first kick in his stomach. Hazel remained hidden in, the f in fear she too would be punished. Like, what is up with that? I mean... <laughs> That's like the third different little story that they've had. Like, I wonder if it's like a reference to like his childhood or something. That's what it sounds like. Should be more Kubrat. Let me see. Let me see. Here. And one part aqua force. Chemistry plan. This is my third attempt to reduce artificial vitae. Vitae. Former compounds lack the potency I need, but I sense I'm close. Calamine and orpine are given, and the cuprite binds them well. This time, I will attempt aqua regia instead of aqua fortis. I hope this will produce even more solution. The experiment was unsuccessful. The solution is highly acidic and proves impractical to put in to any use except as a detergent. Organic tissue reacts especially violently to the solution and should be handled with the, great, the greatest care. I might be able to use the recipe, but I'm losing hope that I'll find any alchemic solution for my predicament. 
Hmm. I see. to properly vent the fumes from my most recent experiments has taken its toll on many of my less stable ingredients in storage. Some seem unaffected, but many are stained by the fumes and will be difficult to salvage. I shall do what I can to move them to the wine cellar. Huh. Evidence in the laboratory. From laboratory to wine cell. Evidence in the laboratory has revealed that combining four chemicals can create a powerful acid. Some sort of organic debunk. Alright, so. Okay. I don't know what. Like, are you. Dude, having some kind of fucking seizure or something? Like, the screen keeps shaking. something down there that we know. or something. The fragrant taste of rose lingered in his mouth. Turkish delights, he thought. Just like the ones at the consulate in Constantinople. Looks like. What the fuck was that?
park. Sixteenth of May, 1839. The unflinching African sun has continued to plague our expedition, making it impossible to dig until dusk. How Professor Herbert managed to find the location in these vast plains of nothingness remains a mystery to me. When I asked him about the tomb again, he told me about the legend of Tin Hanan, the mother of us all. An interesting story in its own right, but I can't help feeling there's more. Later that evening, we uncovered a passage beneath the dunes leading to a sand-covered stone structure. The professor was confident it was the tomb we sought and ordered the others to clear the way late into the dark, cold night. Tomorrow, I shall lead the men into the ancient structure, hoping to reach the burial chamber. No matter what the professor is keeping from me, the dig should yield something interesting to take back to London and the British Museum. Huh. Wanna dig in Africa, huh? Seventeenth of May, eighteen thirty nine. My hands tremble as I write. I feel a need to document my tribulation, for I fear that my memory will fail me if I linger. Today, I took some men and ventured into the dark, ancient passage we uncovered. 
Our torches burned faintly in the murky air as we slowly made our way underground. The men were superstitious and fearful. They argued loudly, and I felt their strange language getting to me. I mustered my strength and yelled at them to continue down the slopes and broken steps. The crudely carved passage confused me. It looked much older than the 4th century structure we had expected. The twisting path emerged into a great antechamber. The walls were lined with statues unlike any I'd ever seen. Despite their unearthly quality, I felt a strange familiarity toward them, which haunts me still. At the far end of the chamber, a great slab of stone sealed off whatever lay ahead. I gave the order to raise it, and as I pushed through the narrow space, the heavy stone suddenly dropped, sealing me inside. I was trapped. Trapped inside of that thing, huh? Well, that doesn't sound like he had a very good time at all, does it? Man, this is. This place is just fucking confusing as fuck, man. History room is locked. Is there another entrance? I hope so, or we're not getting in there. Tripping or I just fucking hear something behind me.
dude, stop freaking out. Come on, man. What's that? Fantastic. You going back through there now? Caesar, man. 17th of May, 1839. After pounding the unforgiving stone wall for what seemed like an eternity, I realized it was hopeless. I was trapped. I fell to the ground, gasping for air, trying to focus. That's when I saw a faint blue shimmer. My weakened body was heavy to carry but I managed to push myself toward the enchanting light. It was waiting for me. Enclosed in dark nothingness, I felt myself drawn to the mystic light. I reached out, closing it in my hands. The faint glow escaped my fingers and began to spark brightly and spirit me away, unlocking alien memories of spiraling towers, endless deserts, and impossible geometry. The next thing I can remember is the grating sound of stone being lifted. The voices of the Arabs pulling me to safety. And grasped firmly in my hands was the broken pieces of a most peculiar relic. Very interesting story. Much of the castle is old and hasn't been tended to for centuries. When the shadow arrives, it won't take long until things start falling apart. We're just buying time anyway. Let's do what we can. There isn't much to be done about the wars. We should reinforce weak structures. The ground will tremble and there's a risk everything will cave in on us. Especially downstairs. Here, here, and there. Let's get the servants working on it. Sounds like they're trying to prepare for this fucking thing, whatever it is. It sounds fucking like it's about to fucking bring down this whole fucking house, man. That's probably why the ground and shit kept shaking. I wonder what that was all about. It's like this dude having a fucking seizure or something. You have to be swift when you activate the first one. You hear that? If it stops, you'll have to start over. Isn't all this a bit excessive? You can never be too careful, then.
Lord Castle 1801. Another region rich with lore is Altstadt. Deep within the East Prussian woods for centuries, there have been stories surrounding the hamlet and his neighbor, and its neighbor, Castle Brandenburg. The quiet forest clad mountains dressed with scattered lakes is as picturesque as it can be, albeit the area is haunted by the dark. Haunted by the dark. Ask any local and you will hear proof of widespread superstition. All travelers should indulge themselves in such conversations since it certainly serves as exciting entertainment. All of them have their own twist on the tale, but there are some motifs that keep reappearing. Huh. The gatherers. The story reaches all the way back to the time of the Thirty Years' War. It said that soldiers who abandoned their duty got lost in the cold, dark woods and were forever damned to roam the grounds. Their bodies rot by their tainted souls have left them disfigured and empty of essence. Many have cited them over the years and described them as horrid revenants. They move silently through the woods, shying away from any beholder. They are called gatherers as they seem to follow some ambition to steal living creatures. It is their prey which can be heard struggling inside damp burlap sacks dragged behind them, which reveal their presence. What dark scheme do they follow? Huh. Okay. A visit undone. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, the well-known erudite, visited Altstadt at the start of the 16th century. He resided in the local inn for a fortnight as he looked for the remnants of kingdoms past. During his stay, the all prominent members of the society paid notice and he is mentioned in many records of the time. One day he went to investigate a burrow in the northwestern glades only to never be seen again. Heinrich is known to have passed away in Grenoble some ten years later. <laughs> he dismissed the notion of ever visiting Altstadt which makes you wonder what really happened. Who is this mysterious man who visited the sleepy Hamlin in the woods and what happened to him? Well, that's uh, it's quite a story. <laughs> the Immortal Baron. The Baron of Brandenburg lives a reclusive life with his family and at his castle nearby Altstadt and like most of those of noble birth, rumors are inherited alongside with the title. Researching the history reveals little before the castle was consumed by fire in the late 16th century. It was rebuilt by Alexander, a nobleman from the Rhinelands, claiming the role as a protector of the Prussian state. Alexander helped the region to flourish and remain popular throughout his presumed lifetime. The family has always been secretive when it comes to the lineage and heritage, therefore the birth and death of Alexander and his offspring has never been fully rec recorded. This, is, this has fed the idea that the Baron is in fact the one and the same who came from the West over 300 years ago, lived through the time of occupation and joined the, the coveted order of the Black Eagle along with the great leaders of his country. Are we trying to say that the dude that we're chasing after, the Baron or whatever, is immortal? Well, that's, uh, that's quite a fucking story. Huh. That's, uh, that is something. Alright guys, I'm going to call it a video. Alright. I got to, uh, when we come back, I'm going to see what I can do with this thing here. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, I appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Alright, see you later.